So I need your attention here, okay? We're going to talk about sustainable development. I would say the vision of the World Youth Alliance is of personal excellence. You see all of these young people from all around the world. They care about others. They care about the world. We all have the same mission because we all want to change the world. We all want to change our societies. Everyone's talking about human rights, but no one knows why they're protecting them. They're looking for answers. Who am I? Do I actually matter? How can I really implement human dignity in my day-to-day -day life? Just that idea that if you believe in something enough and you work hard enough, you can really change the world with something as simple as the idea of the dignity of the human person. If you can teach people lessons of human dignity, there would be a lot less massacres or genocide. Which is why principles that YA stands for, which is equality and dignity for every human being, is very important because unless you know why you're fighting for something, I don't think that goal can be achieved in the short term or even in the long term. Why is really making me see the beauty in a person despite everything else and making it something more than just ideology or a theory, putting it into practice and really kind of starting a revolution. <laughs> I think there is an urgency in terms of artwork. I don't see anyone else doing the work the World Youth Alliance is doing. Freedom is this huge burden of responsibility, but also power in that sense, that through ideas, you're shaping your surroundings and trying to sculpt them towards something better. Human dignity is how he is to improve himself for what is true and what is beautiful definitely an urgent time to point out those inconsistencies in our different ideologies and show that we need to be consistently affirming the value of human life at all levels, otherwise we all become vulnerable. Organizations like World Youth Alliance have to exist because there's a constant need for someone to stand up for the little guy, the person that has no voice, and that's what World Youth Alliance does. The World Youth Alliance aims to educate young people on the dignity of the human person and to build solidarity among the youth from developed and developing countries. Signing up to become a YA member is super easy. Number one, you have to be between the ages of 10 to 30. And second, you have to sign the World Youth Alliance Charter on our website. And after that, you'll be part of hundreds of opportunities around the world and you'll meet a lot of new friends. There are many opportunities for young people to get involved with WIA. First is through our advocacy-related events by studying our WIA white papers or representing WIA at international institutions. Second is through our educational projects like undergoing our certified training program, becoming an intern, or bringing the human dignity curriculum to your school or youth community. And the third is through our cultural initiatives like participating in our regional arts forum or through our Manhattan International Film Festival. Why a member should do the CTP because it allows them to understand deeper the dignity of the human person and it gives them various reading, studying, how movements around the world have really helped in terms of promoting the dignity of the person and what are some of the problematic movements that have led to um, various challenges in our history. First is really enjoying the readings. The readings are really rich and there's so many great authors that we've compiled through the CTP. So it's really important for you to enjoy the experience and not rushing through it. The second is for you to discuss these ideas with your family, with your friends, so that you're able to also get their ideas and their thoughts. And the third is if you need any help, just asking for your mentors um, to really help you and coach you in the process. Why members can apply to our internship program, which is available online. It is available in all of our regional offices around the world, and we have limited slots, so I encourage you to sign up today. The World Youth Alliance invests in really educating young people on the dignity of the human person. And this is important because when young people around the world understand that they have worth, that the people around them have the same worth that they have, they're able to create excellent decisions and they're able to contribute towards the flourishing of their societies and their countries. First, you have to undergo the Certified Training Program or the CTP. And once you've passed the training program, you can 
inform your regional director and they will help you with the next steps needed for you to become a chapter leader for your own school or for your country. Yes, definitely, we have a program for them and it's called the Human Dignity Curriculum. It's a personal identity program that helps children understand their dignity and how they can make excellent decisions. Yes, of course, you can become a World Youth Alliance friend. Waya friends help Waya through various ways by becoming a donor or by introducing us to youth communities or to schools all around the world. We'd like to invite you to join the 1 million young people all around the world and become part of the World Youth Alliance. Don't forget to like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. See you around! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to officially welcome you to this year's World Youth Alliance Africa Arts Forum. I am particularly very happy with the overwhelming response we got for the Arts Forum this year. If you're joining us for the first time and you believe that young people around the world are making the world a better place, then you're in the right place. Um, my name is Cynthia Maingi. I'm the regional director for the Africa office. Our regional office is in Kenya, in Nairobi. The World Youth Alliance is a global coalition of young people working to promote the dignity of the person at the international and regional level, as well as the, the grassroots level through education, culture, and advocacy. We have six regional offices. Um, our Africa office, as I said, is in Kenya, in Nairobi. Our Europe office is in Belgium. Asia Pacific office in Philippines, in the Manila. We have also an office in the Middle East, in Lebanon, an office in Latin America, and both our North America office, as well as our headquarters, are in New York. Our mission as a world Alliance is to empower young people to be able to articulate, defend, and affirm the dignity of the human person. Dignity is the value of human life, the value that every human person carries within themselves. The fact that every person is worthy of respect, is worthy of honor. We empower young people to be able to defend the dignity of the human person within their lives, the dignity that they carry, within themselves, in their lives, and also to be able to influence the communities and the society within which they live. Our work is divided into three program areas, advocacy, education, and culture. In advocacy, our work equips young people to work on critical topics that we face today. We provide research, fact sheets, and statements on topics that have been discussed and negotiated by our members at the United Nations and on current international policy issues. We provide training on international relations and foreign diplomacy for our members. Within the pillar of education, the World Youth Alliance educational programs equips students of all ages from kindergarten all through to the university level with the resources, training and intellectual formation to promote the dignity of the human person. We have offline and online programs, and one such program is a certified training program. 
which is a collection of texts that provide the philosophical underpinnings for the mission of the World Youth Alliance. This is a program that you can actually access for free on our website. We have an internship program that we offer within the regional office, which is in Nairobi in Kenya. We take interns in January, in May, and in September. We also have conferences and summits and forums such as the Africa Arts Forum. We also have camps for our younger members. And within these platforms, we empower young people by giving them the opportunity to learn and contribute to discussions on contemporary issues in our society. The culture pillar enables the World Youth Alliance to provide cultural and art programs for the integral development of the human pathway. Art impacts our understanding of human dignity on an individual and societal level. The main art activity that takes place in the Africa region is actually the Africa Arts Forum, which is what we are currently um, tuning into. WIRE strongly believes in culture, and through our cultural events, we give an expression of the inherent dignity of each human person. Through experiencing art in this forum, one is given the privilege to share in the artist's soul, to receive the artist's gift of oneself through the work that they exhibit. The World Youth Alliance believes that art is a mirror through which we can peer into the complexity, the integrity, and the beauty of human nature and our societies. The Africa Arts Forum is an annual program activity that the World Youth Alliance Africa hosts as a way of congregating or bringing together young people who are committed to impacting our society through art. And we shall see that today through the presentations that we have in store for you. And even through the speaker's um, information that he will share with us. These initiatives are pivoted from the acknowledgement of the inalienability and inviolability of human dignity. This year, we are so excited to still be able to hold this forum, even though we are doing it on an online platform <laughs> due to the global, um, to the current global COVID-19 pandemic. And we have an amazing speaker to talk to us about how art is a vehicle for social change, as well as very, very well um, put together presentations that will still pass on this message. For all of you who have joined us today, we'd like to know you. Kindly send us your name, send us your country, the country that you're from, um, the country that you're representing in the comment section, and also tag, mention your friend, so that they can as well join us today and we can celebrate together. We welcome you to read more about us, the work that we do on our website. And you can reach out to us on Africa at wire.net. Africa at wya.net. To engage in the program and programs and activities that we offer. Thank you so much for being with us today. We are so excited to have you and we hope that you'll stick till the end and enjoy what we have prepared for you. I will now present Wangeshi Mwaneki, our MC for the day and our first presenter. Hi guys, my name is Wangeshi Mwaneki. I am so, so excited to be here to do the arts for has said it's a weird time to have a whole Africa you know arts forum within the online space but we are grateful for it and so thank you so so much for joining us please keep writing your name keep writing your country I'm going to be giving shout outs more shout ups just before we start and I'm going to start off by dancing I have a short presentation so if you can you can stand wherever you are and dance with me that will be fun. Um, as you've heard, my name is Wangeshi Moniki. I'll be the MC for the day. And I'm very, very, very excited. So I'm going to put this here so that you guys can enjoy my dance. Great. Thank you. 
You guys have enjoyed it. I'm a little out of breath <laughs> because I've really, 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 really danced my heart out. Thank you so, 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 so much for joining us. I'm going to be giving a few shout outs. So you guys have been, you know, commenting on, on the platform and just saying, um, this is my name and this is the country which I'm from. So let me just read a few of those people. I can see Kilo do you um he's just joined us guys i'm a little out of breath because that dancing was fire you have to comment and see how fire that dancing was anyway so i can see kilo and do you he's just joined us and he's saying um he can't wait to see what they we have in store and he's honestly excited to see the amazing performances that are going to be showcased on this platform today um we can see sb tamrat saying congratulations to my africa for organizing this and he's um from wire the european chapter ethiopian not european ethiopian i can see hussein hamza he's saying i'm um, hussein hamza from nigeria so we have a few comments coming in i can see copro kowa saying hi i'm from liberia welcome 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 I can see Sahansi Mulu, greeting and love from Bamenda in Cameroon. Thank you so much for joining us. Moses Njoroge Mungai, my name is Moses, representing Kenya. Did I say I'm from Kenya? Okay. Wangeshi Mwaniki from Kenya, take two. Great. Um, keep them coming, keep the comments coming. You can see 
Boker, I hope I said that right. Naza Khan saying, hi, I'm from Somaliland. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, guys, for, you know, keeping with us today. We are so, 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 so excited. And we have great, great performances in store and, and lined up for you. So thank you so much. I think we're going to move on to the next presentation. So I'm going to read out the bio of our next presenter. And our next presenter is actually someone I look um, up to because he's one of the greatest poets we have in the country. His name is Ken Kibet, AKA Mufasa. He has established himself as a leading performance poet and you know artist in Kenya. He's born um, in Eldoret and partly raised in the small township of Kapsabet before finally moving to Nairobi to pursue tertiary education. It was there that Mufasa fell in love with the spoken word poetry genre and eventually made this decision to pursue it as a career. Renowned for intense performances, Mufasa serves as a drudge and workshops facilitator at Poetry Slam Africa, a slam competition that aims to recognize poets and spoken word artists discussing a range of current issues affecting Africa and the world at large. He's a co-founder of Creative Spills, a collective that has put it on themselves to push for the growth and spread of spoken word poetry in Kenya, while virtually proposing to give the young people an opportunity to address, to address the issues that are happening all around them. So without further ado, help me welcome none other than Mufasa. was cutting cutlery. I make a living out of a poem. I make bread come off a paragraph. I must be something or part of something numeral. People like us are always numbered that way. We make good statistics for businesses, for governments, for organizations. It's a numbers game. The youth are not playing, they are paying for the game. My understanding is people who stand for the youth stand for the youth, but the youth have no stand. It's a country of haves and have nots. People who have the notes have the note to take from the youth, then pay the youth to lie. They have what they don't have. If Kirinyaga is rising, why are young people paid to tweet about it? Every morning, the sun rises, and no one asks us to tweet about it because we can all see it. See, nothing is like it used to be. Radio lost the rhythm, and we don't go out to get air and play. In fact, the rap game that changed, not just the beats, they lack the beat, but they've got something to say. Kishaka would make us come alive. Now we're just leaving a beat. Today, Amazon is burning, Mao is falling, the rivers are leaving, the weather is folding, and contrary to what we were told, the future is not in our hands. What we have is a phone with features, but we were still on Instagram. They were stealing our joker for features. No playgrounds, just buildings. So if babies cannot be babies, then don't blame them for cussing, for hanging onto a phone instead of hanging onto a swing. All these people we have, doctors, governors, senators, ministers, governors, MPs. They're the only sound we know is to dissolve after five years. But when will we become a solution? I mean, people who steal, 
will need pace to run into hiding, right? Except when you're the first president or the second or elected or appointed. You can claim you're starting something new and cause damage like never seen before. After all, isn't that how the newspapers describe the boy who jumped into State House? They call him damaged. They call him disturbed. As if to call him jobless, to call him angry, to call him neglected youth would not make news. The newspapers need news to make news. Maybe the next time they will call him a zombie. They'll call him a maniac. They will call him a walking dead. Christian Pinkin Party is walking dead. A god, a eulogy, praising the future already dead to us. I'm not saying your leaders are uncanny. I'm saying your leaders will come collect pots at the funeral. They will use a body in a coffin to resurrect their ambition. How did we get here? When we asked for a miracle, I thought we wanted the Lazarus amongst us to rise again, but here we go, but now us. We won the thief, we won the thief since 1963. Politicians have been selling dead Christmas trees to Kenyans wishing for a new year. Every year. Especially this year. Hello, Africa. Uh, the second piece. Uh, I'm not giving my poems titles today. I'll just give you a performance. I heard about Chicago. I heard about buffaloes, about who's fast that made way for footpaths. I heard about Mississippi, about Rosa Parks carrying Emmett Till on her mind. I don't know about the pain of mothers who bury their children, but I heard about the noise of an open casket and I thought about memories that refuse to fit into boxes, how time has found a way to carve them into portraits so they hang on walls. I heard about 16th June about a tongue too heavy to leap with another tongue in the same mouth. I heard about Biko, about school uniforms, scarves, shorts, and gun shots. I heard about a sharp German accent and blunt blood. I heard about Ali, Ali parks and animal zoos. I heard about humans expected to stare at monkeys when they looked in the mirror, hiding from the roar of the football pitches. I had this scheme, still got it. It attracts bananas. But I saw it here. I saw how your wrongs can keep you alive, but it is right that your second name can get you killed. I saw what someone with albinism saw. I saw how we can have gods that can be appeased by the tone of the skin, not the voice of souls, how some gods can mold your selfishness until your spirit can stomach your mind when it has the guts to say they don't deserve to leave. I do. We all know God is love. So why do we put God in our actions full of so much hate? Why do we carry black bodies on our updates? Don't even wait for their fathers to choose the dead to view the body. It has taken South Africans to burn, kill other Africans for me to ask, is the Africa in South Africa silent? So I can write bull crap to a Zulu king and say the crap was silent. Where is the mother and mama Africa right now? Why do we feel like stepchildren? I wrote this poem with 16 bars. I hope they have spaces between them enough for us to feed our minds because we don't need bulletproof vests for your dying of corruption. 
We don't need state bios. We need the state to care for every life. We don't need hate. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. We have a great future if we find love. Now on to my last piece. Uh, this one. Uh, this one. <laughs> so I wrote this poem a couple of years ago. Uh, I was in uni. And I remember, I remember the prettiest girl in class. Uh, this girl who used to sit in front of me. She had me messed up. <laughs> uh, so during the early times when I was, that was when I was starting to write and she's among the first people I wrote about, you know, I was still in that essence of my early poetry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. You always <laughs> sat in front of me <laughs> in class. <laughs> if you ask me to watch your back, I will tell you. <laughs> It'll not be the first time I do that. You met men in our class, politicians, and made yourself politics, so they couldn't keep you off their mouth. I met myself a clock, so I could just sit there, watch you, watch them, and read. So the first time you asked me to enter your world, I was confused. I quickly took off my shoes, didn't know if I was supposed to, but I told myself if your world was anything like your neck, or your dresses, or your eyes and sunshine, the swell of the movement in my capillaries used to hold me in shock, then I had to. Of course your words were not always in black and white, but I understood you when you said, you will name the crooked parts of me crows and keep them in her diary as badly parts of me. So I extended my arms like roots and told you I would hold you down. And for those three years you're here, we never talked about Valentine's. I mean, what is 14th of February? When I could leave you breathless on the 10th and 10th and 1st of July, but you left in September. And October and November were enough to make my insides change from Amazon to Alaska just when my skin had started to whisper in Portuguese. You, you should have taught me how to fly before you taught me how to fall for you. Where I am, I can only crawl into positions where I picture you, I picture you with long hair. I picture my hands and your hair as playmates. I imagine your hair making touchdowns on your shoulder. I want to know if you sleep trying to forget me. Because I wake up in the morning still trying to forget you. I want to know if I close my eyes and put my hands on your face. I can trace your mornings on your skin and see if you ever wake up to me. I know I've never written you a letter before, but I have waited for the rains to fall on my window, the window in my bedroom, so I could write your name on a mist. That's the coldest thing I could do to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Peace, Africa. Great, amazing. Mm -hmm. Hey! Ah, uh, uh, so 
I'm back. Thank you guys so, so much for staying on. Thank you so, so much from Mufasa. The whole time during the poetry, I was just like, hey, 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 fire, fire, fire. Crazy, crazy, awesome. Thank you so, so much. Um, we have, I'm going to read a few shout outs and then we can continue with the show. I'm sorry we have, we, oh, you couldn't hear me, but now you're, here, you're hearing me, which is amazing, fantastic, great. We have Kevin Onchoke who was saying, great, great performance from Mufasa. We have Riziki who was earlier saying, I love, love Mufasa. We have Mother Williams, um, greetings from Sierra Leone. We have um, Ibrahim. Honorable Ibrahim Hamza Ahmad, greetings from Nigeria. And just so many of you shouting us out today. Thank you so, so, so much. We're going to get into our next performance. So I'm going to introduce our next performer. And our next performer is Paul Ogola, a motivated, committed, and talented actor with strong acting instincts and extensive training. Paul is a perfectionist who possesses a solid work ethic, which compels him to keep tweaking and acting part until both he and his colleagues are fully satisfied with his performance. He continues achieving the highest standard of performance and is always sharing his skills with local actors. He continues working alongside renowned figures in film, TV and independent film company settings. He's energetic, goes the extra mile and is sure to make a real difference to any project he's involved in. Paul Ogala is currently acting in the Netflix series Sacred Games season two as a Rico directed by Anurag Keshap. I hope I said that right. He previously acted on another Netflix original, Sensei 8, season one and two, directed by Lana and Lily Wachowski. Um, and all these amazing people, I'm just going to name them. Matrix Trilogy, James McTeague, Ninja Assassin, V for Vendetta, Tom Taikwar, Run Lord Runner, and Dan Glass co-starred in the um, award-winning feature film Katikati, which premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival in 2010. He made his first screen appearance in the movie Nairobi Half-Life, submitted for the Oscars in 2012. So without much further ado, help me welcome Paul Ogola. Thank you.
di sana ya du 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 Di sana ya du du Here's what he looks. three months clean. I understand. I understand. Okay. Okay. Ni kwenye tao the what a smile the little diom okay ama kujenga shawa hii usijisumbue kuchemsha maji yuko mwanaume This is the second man you're hurting passionately because of reasons best known to you. Well, you're part of me. Me, part of you. Oh, no, no, no. I am not part of your hurtful self rules. I am the side that you keep forgetting that you need for your essence. Why does everyone refer me to you? 
why does everyone tell me that I have to be like you? I have to be strong like you. I have to think like you. I have to know the truth like you and have the power that you have. Does anyone ever think about what I feel? Does anyone ever think about what I go through every single night? To even know what it feels like to be low. To even understand how it feels like to be in pain. To be vulnerable to people you trust the most with you all. Your blood relatives, friends. Your closest friends and the best friend you thought you had in the world. I mean, your husband to be. You wouldn't understand how it feels like to be betrayed by the people that you love the most. To be betrayed by your husband to be. Someone whom you gave your all. Mom and dad would have understood. They left me in this world as a toddler. Couple all this with the fact that I am a mother now. The burden of raising a child in these tough economic times in Kenya. I'm in pain. I'm in bitterness. I'm in distress. Keep going. Maybe I'm not good enough. What did I do to deserve all this? Will things ever get better? What did I do? And yet you're here, Rose. What does that tell you? I contemplated three times. Yet you are here, Rose. You know why? Us. Us, Rose. Tough times are for only tough cookies like you. It is okay to mourn. It is okay to feel sad. It is okay recognizing your sadness, brokenness, challenges. Accept all that, you know? Just don't get caught up in the loop from hell, feeling, feeling sad that you're sad or broken that you're broke. The next step after accepting challenge is solution. Solve it, Ruth. Mm -hmm. And for that, you must go back to who you are, power, and that is me. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, that was a beautiful, 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 beautiful film. I'm going to just give you a little story about it. So Heart Heart is a it's a yeah, Heart Heart is a true story that I came to know about from my friend Ashley Charlotte, star of the film, who had it rough for a long time and was now on the edge. One brief afternoon, she reached out to me. We set up a meeting where she told me everything that had been going on with her through the years. She needed to speak to the world and anyone going through such situations. She specifically told me, I need to tell the story through a short film. I have tried to imagine which filmmaker with a quick turnaround to approach and my mind couldn't go past Paul or Gola. I wasn't sure if I could really deliver the film as it was in April with the pandemic situation. I wrote the script within a week sent it to Ashley, she liked it. Then I immediately summoned my very able and helpful friends from St. Philip's Church, Galaxy Players, Pascal Omondi, AD, Robert Njoroge, cameraman and sound, Ian Onyango, Onyango rather, sorry, um, fiance, uh, 
Fiance and Rachel as the neighbor within a week. Um, $20 down the line, we made heart heart. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for keeping with us and for enjoying this Africa Arts Forum, which is extremely different because of the pandemic. But thank you because you keep it interesting and you're here with us and we're enjoying, enjoying, enjoying. So we're going to go to the next part of our program. And I'm just about to introduce our key speaker for the day. Please keep commenting um, where you're watching us from. You can tell us how you're liking the performances from the poetry um, by Mufasa to the short film by Paul Ogola to my dance um, at the beginning of, of this beautiful, beautiful broadcast. So absolutely keep commenting, keep liking, keep telling us where you're watching us from and keep even shouting out people who you've invited to also join us on this broadcast. So without going any further, I'm going to welcome um, our speaker for the day, who's going to be speaking to us about, you know, art for positive social change. And so our speaker is Kibunja Mokiri, sorry, popularly known as MC Kibunja. He's passionate about events and the work that goes around into creating experiences, as well as memories in as far as events are concerned. He believes that events are avenues to create memories both for client as well for himself. It is this belief that drives him to put in exceptional effort in all and any events entrusted to him as a host or master of ceremonies. He has over seven years experience as an event host, which have been marked with tremendous success and as an MC, event and host and hype man. Aside from hosting events, MC Kibunja is a trained lawyer and advocate in waiting. He's popularly known around the streets as the only MC with an LLB. Hey. So without much further ado, I'm going to welcome MC Kibunja. What's up, what's up, what's up, what do you do? Uh, I am sorry that the video is grainy. Uh, I don't know what's up, I don't know what's up, but uh, as you heard, my name is MC Kibunja, AKA the only MC with an LLP. Uh, and as you can see, the football lovers, I'm preparing to celebrate our win uh, this weekend as uh, Paris Saint-Germain, Thrash Barcelona, yeah, yes. So, on to the topic of the day. Uh, also, um, apologies, if you see me looking down, uh, I'm not looking down on any one of you. <laughs> I'm just referring to my notes. So, on to the topic of the day, art as a, so, as a vehicle for social change. Uh, I'd like to start with a very popular saying or phrase that has gone around. Uh, uh, and also has been said by a philosopher of our time uh, who goes by the name of Julius Owino, a.k.a. Giuliani. He says that, uh, Wasani Nikio Chajami, uh, which loosely translated means that artists are the mirror of society. And yes, so for me, when I was thinking about this particular topic, that is the first line that came to mind or stood out for me. Uh, with regards to social change and art. They say that where emotions and words fail, art speaks. And uh, that is seen throughout.
Hi guys, back like we never left. Uh, we apologize for whatever happened. It's not on our end. We shall blame the weather, nothing else, the weather. So as I said earlier, my name is MC Kibunja, aka the only MC with an LLB representing the 254. That is Kenya. And uh, yeah, I was here to speak about arts as a vehicle for social change. And uh, I'll just quickly recap what I'd said. I'd said that uh, uh, I had quoted a, a popular artist from Kenya. His name is Giuliani, aka Julius Owino. And uh, the statement is Wasani Kio Chajami, which means loosely translated is that artists are the mirror to society. Like what we do as artists, as, as creatives, as anyone who uh, is painting, drawing, singing, uh, doing poems and, uh, and movies, uh, etc. What they're doing is they're painting the understanding of society. And uh, for me, I have a strong belief that where words and emotions fail, art speaks. And uh, before we were rudely interrupted by again the weather, <laughs> uh, I was I was breaking down the various social influences that we have seen uh, growing up. Uh, I will speak from my perspective as a '90s kid. Uh, there was a time where all we were being sold was uh, as a creative, you need bling blings, uh, that's chains. Well, it still goes around nowadays. There was a season where the bikini body was what was selling. Uh, there was a season where uh, going to jail was the in thing. Like if your favorite rapper did not go to jail, then they were not a very bad rapper. And as you look at that scenario or such scenarios you see that indeed what they are depicting is what is happening in society yeah and uh, for example i'll give an example of kenya uh of late over the past one year there has been a sound that came out um some very young guys uh talented i'll give them that they're talented and uh, they grew up listening to uh sounds of the dancehall genre uh guys like vibes cartel and the likes and now what that birthed is what they were singing as gengeton and now gengeton is uh a genre that exemplifies the sex um kind of a lifestyle the drinking and the weed mostly the weed because now these guys grew up watching uh the jamaicans smoke weed in their videos and even use weed in reference to music or in music as a reference and uh, that being said now to the topic of the day which is art as a vehicle for social change that being said um it is clear from past experiences and what i have broken down previously that indeed whatever we propel in our art, be it poems, music, the movies, um, what else, uh, drawings, uh, graffiti, and all these things, what we are trying to propel as creatives is one thing. We are trying to speak the language of society. And that is how art now integrates with society because it gives it a voice. It gives the ongoing things a voice that could not uh, really be accentuated or painted in any other way, you see? Um, and now to what we should be you doing as creatives and as artists is picking up social issues and speaking on them. If you look around at uh, the music that's playing nowadays, what it glorifies is partying, um having a group of guys or a group of girls together and uh, being more mainly being the center of attention because if you look at rappers they are full of themselves in a video i have nothing against rappers i have nothing against any artist i'm just saying that what now happens is you see what the message they spread to us as listeners and also the, mes the message we spread as creatives is what we are actually thinking and what is going on in society. Look around, go on YouTube and you'll see, um, especially when the pandemic hit, you'll see that everyone now was trying to do a music video 
that was in line with the social media sites. You'll see that the concept of the whole video was either an Instagram screen or a YouTube live screen or a Zoom meeting. You know, they're trying to integrate like how society is changing the integrated in art. And for me, my opinion is that art now is now now that that for example that is the example now that art is a, is a is a vehicle for social change or is a vehicle is a mirror for society sorry yes those are the words is a mirror for society how we can use art to change the problem that has become a cultural issue is now putting out content that speaks either to the issue about the issue or with the side effects of the issue a good example is uh, going back now to the Gengeton thing. Uh, last year, we did a conference in a town called Kericho. Uh, it's in Kenya. And uh, what those, what we were speaking about, we were speaking against gender-based violence and rape. There's 16 days against gender-based violence in November. That was what we were doing. And for the 16 days, my task as an MC was to lead uh, discussions and to lead uh, what we call a hype session, like, dance with the people so that they can we can capture their attention and all these kids wanted was one to only to dance to music that was getting it on but they did not understand the language because you see Welcome back again for the against time. We are not counting and uh, we are still blaming the weather. We are not blaming any other person. It's the weather. It's the weather. It's the weather. Different time zones, different weather. Yeah. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, as I broke down to them, the urban language and the lingo and uh, what is said in the lyrics, it began, it, 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 it began to become... Again, it began to it, it became cringy for them because now I'm explaining what has been put artistically in plain words. Yeah. And now they began to understand how gross, quote unquote, uh, some of the lyrics are or what they are speaking about in very explicit terms. So you see, uh, unless it's decoded, uh, sometimes art can lose the direction of social change as a uh, can lose the, the direction as a vehicle. For social change and um, there's some questions that have been asked and uh, i'd like to respond to some of them for example um how can we use art to influence good leadership uh over the years um maybe my, my nigerian uh brothers can help me nigeria or ghana uh there's artists who have sung 
about the poor state of the country, like Fela Kuti, I think. And uh, also, if you listen, if you listen to some of the songs by a guy like Burna Boy, or songs by even most of the songs by Vibes Cartel, he speaks about the issue of the government and how the poor man is is suffering under the arm of the government. So how we can use uh, art to influence good leadership is through speaking to the issue. If art does not address an issue, then it loses its purpose. Because as I said earlier, where voices and emotions fail or actions fail, art will speak. And the good thing with art is it draws the, it draws the imagery of the people to the issue. That's why you see, like, uh, I know in Kenya, the most popular things around the newspapers are the cartoons. The cartoons depicting how society is going, or maybe the satirical shows, political satirical shows, and also comedy. I've seen comedy influence leadership or influence how people uh, deal with things. But the key thing on how art should influence good leadership is being the light. If art, or as artists, or as creatives, if we took it upon ourselves to be the light that lights the issue, um, then I think, in my opinion, it would be a way to influence good leadership. Because if we call out the ills in society, now every other person now becomes aware. Because people listen to music more, people will watch a movie as opposed to watch a political debate. People will uh, listen to a poem as opposed to listening to a political debate on radio, choose a side, choose uh, choose maybe a politician or a person. They will listen to these satirical shows and comedies. So if as creatives we took it upon ourselves to speak, especially when it comes to near uh, elections or when an issue rises up like corruption or uh, the, the the killings, we saw what, what, what happened uh, in the US with George Floyd and how rappers and artists took to the streets to speak about it. And it did cause a change. Like they won over the leadership, the leadership listened to them. So for art, I think if we light the issue or if we be the light where there's an issue and highlight the issue, that's, the, that's, that's one way we can influence good leadership. Okay, next question is, um, how has your journey been as an artist shaped the way you view society and influence the space you are in now? Um, so uh, a brief, let me take you on a journey, a brief one. Uh, I studied law, as was said earlier, and uh, went ahead to do the Kenya School of Law, which well, that is where now you get the license to get admitted to the bar and everything. But before that, my artistic side has been active ever since I was in primary school. I used to act. Uh, lead actor, by the way, lead actor. This is my good side. This is my good side. You see, a good side. Anyway, um, yeah, that's where it started. I uh, joined high school, never did any of the acting. Uh, in high school, I learned how to dance. Then I joined a dance group. Then I became an MC. Now, my choice for studying law was because I needed uh, an outlet for my geeky side, and that is law. And now, when I married the two, art, and law, I decided now that my vehicle would be for change. I would, I would, I would really want to impact people in the industry, creative industry, the music industry, in a different way. I have the legal knowledge, and I'm also a creative on the other end. So for me, my goal uh, going into creativity or the creative industry, my goal was to marry the two. Um, sometimes on my Instagram page. Uh, I do a piece on police brutality. I did a few rap sessions on police brutality and um, how I view society from an artistic end, which is the question raised here, uh, the way you view society and influence the space you are in now. Now from the creative side, I have come to view people as the only valuable asset that, that we should be concentrating on as creatives, uh, even as humans, people are the most valuable asset because how I have seen them transform transform my, what is it called, my brand, it's people who, who have grown me to where I am right now. And so how art shaped my view on society 
was that I saw that these people were the right outlet or the right parts of my vehicle, my artistic vehicle, to spread the message out to the people. So I'd say how I view people nowadays is that they are the right and proper conduit for anything I have and any creative thing I have. The space I am in now is influenced by mostly uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lying. The space I'm in now is mostly influenced by my desire for change. I really want to see us as artists have that impact on society. I really want us to speak about issues and ills, not be divided on um, this is a gospel artist, this is a secular artist. For me, I really want artists to be the voice, artists to be the guys who call out the government. Because, like, for example, in Kenya, we don't have an opposition. Okay, a functional opposition. So I'd like us to be guys who are putting checks and balances on the government. Yeah. And uh, thank you for having me on this platform. Looking forward to more discussions when we are together and not separated by the pandemic and the weather. <laughs> Thank you so much, MC Kibunja. Such an honor to host an MC, um, a fire MC like you, honestly. Thank you so, so, so much. So we're going to get into the rest of our performance. Um, our final presentations for today are from three very talented artists from around Africa. We have David Hagos, a young person from Ethiopia. This is what he has to say about um, his photos. The first thing that motivated me was a NASA photo I saw a week ago, which shows West and East Africa during nighttime. The photograph shows almost all countries as being dark, meaning no visible light from outer space. However, along the Blue Line River, there is a clear light which goes all the way to Egypt. So I really felt for my people who are still using candles to see during the nighttime. The river provides electri electricity for other countries while our country is still in the dark. With the current construction of the guard, the great Ethiopian renaissance dam around blue nile abbey with our neighborhood neighboring countries sudan and egypt i think the usage of this huge river should not be a means of conflict and war we have to use our god given resources wisely and accordingly then we shall see far more far more bright colors meaning prosperity so that is the photo right there it's a very 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 beautiful piece of art Great. So our next artist is Emmanuel Abiodan. Um, Emmanuel Abiodan is a young Nigerian whose interests are on creativity, art production, oratory, and reception. He's enthusiastic in developing a professional career in art business, research, and human resource, as well as meeting new challenges while acquiring new professional skill. Emmanuel combines forms from his immediate culture, its iconography and symbolisms, to create works that speak the language of his social environment. He's eager to connect with other artists and creative groups for not only the benefit of his career, but also for the development of art, of art practice in general. Emmanuel is a strong believer in the power of every piece of art to institute dialogue that can transform society in multi-faceted ways. So there we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Great, so finally, we have Yvonne Sirali. I hope I say that well. Sirali is a female contemporary artist from Mombasa based in Nairobi. She began professional art in, 19, in 2019 <laughs> ah, and after quitting employment. And so far, her work has been exhibited both virtually and physically at ISK, Nairobi Gallery and the National Museum, just to name a few. She pushes for positivity through her work because everything starts in our minds and our thoughts create reality. Her work is inspired by nature and powered by imaginations with the use of acrylic paints, brushes, and palette knives to create an abstract, abstract expression of her ideas. She loves abstract because of the freedom of personal expression and the effortless flow that one experiences while creating abstract, hence allowing her to express her love for color. She says the Figurative pieces with a blue theme are part of a series that I'm currently, or rather she's currently working on, dubbed A Queen Finding Herself. 
The project is personal to her as it tends to connect with women on remembering our power and acknowledging the force within us. The series has pieces embracing beauty, speaking up, and even self-belief. She did a, she did an online exhibition during the lockdown that introduced the project. The exhibition can be found on her Instagram and Facebook page at by Sirali Twitter at by Sirali YouTube at by Sirali Facebook at by Sirali Instagram. So there we are. You can see it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work of art. If you've stuck around up to this far, you've made it. This was the Africa Arts Forum 2020, the COVID pandemic edition is what we are dubbing it and thank you so so much from for joining us and for being with us all the way from the the first presentations with Mufasa to our amazing speaker um MC Kibundra to the short film by Paul Ogola thank you so so much for joining us and the three amazing artists um right at the end with you know beautiful work of art in form of poet uh photography rather and paintings thank you so 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 very much for for joining us, we are so grateful. Thank you for being a wonderful audience for this year's Africa Arts Forum. As I said, we are dubbing it the 2020 Global Pandemic Coronavirus, virus, hashtag COVID-19, hashtag isolation, hashtag sanitize, hashtag wash your face and wash your hands, hashtag stay safe, hashtag, exactly, sign the World Youth Alliance, charter, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for joining us. A special thanks to our wonderful speaker, MC Kibundra, um, Kibundra Mukiri, our regional director, Cynthia Maingi, our marketing director, Demi, as well as the regional director of operations, Kevin Alando, working behind the scenes to make sure this broadcast possible and most importantly, to all of you for joining us. If you haven't signed up yet as a WIRE member, I invite you to join the 1 million young people in over 200 countries and territories, territories Visit wire.net slash get involved to join our movement for free. After you sign up, I also want to invite you to enroll in the certified training program. Visit wya.net slash CTP. Help us to do our online programs and events better by answering our short evaluation form also. Um, thank you so, so much for joining us. Be the first to know our future events. Make sure to like us on our Facebook page and follow us on our Instagram and Twitter. Again, thank you all so very much. And if you're coming from the East African region, um, from Kenya, have a wonderful evening. If you're coming from West Africa, have a wonderful day because it's still early, you know, it's still early Saturday. If you're coming from Central, you know, around Cameroon, have a lovely, lovely afternoon. From here, from me, Wangashi Moniki representing Waya, it's a peace out. Boop, 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 boop. Thank you.